the this the is sea. The, the truffle yeah the sea truffle sea truffle okay Let's so see. just take a like a really really small bite okay. just to get the, the the taste because it's really strong this is a this is a spice My name is Jules and I have a lovely guest mm. with me today, Eitis Jonsdottir. So thank you for thank you for inviting me. Well, for inviting <laughs> us because we're going to harvest seaweed and Eitis is an expert in seaweed utilization and she studied geography and sustainability. And so we're out here on the Reykjanes Peninsula in order to try seaweed Fresh from the ocean. I've never done that before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna pick it and, and put it straight in your mouth. Wow, okay. And before we go out, I think it's really fascinating. You have mapped the majority of the coastline of Iceland. So could you just talk a little bit about the seaweed harvesting and even how you got into it? Yeah, uh, my, my first job after graduation was mapping seaweed habitats. So I've, I've mapped like yeah, roughly half the coastline of Iceland in regards to the species that, 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 that grow there. So yeah, you can say that I, I know quite a lot about seaweeds and, and while I was doing that, I, I kind of fell, fell in love with the, with the material. I mean, you can, you can use it in, in so many ways. Yeah. You can eat it, yeah, you, you, you can harvest it for the, the bioactive uh, ingredients that it has. You can use it in, in skincare or, 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 or medicine. So it's, it's an amazing thing, I, yeah. I, in my opinion. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's I, I'm super excited about this. I mean, yeah. we were talking earlier, she mentioned sushi and like I make plant-based sushi at home with nori sheets. And so like my you know experience with this is very minimal. <laughs> so this will be like jumping right in and kind of spending part of the day with you. And I just think this is so special. So thank you for that. And let's get on to harvesting. Yeah. This species here that we're looking at that I'm standing on uh, is called Clothonk in Icelandic. This is the most common species in, in Icelandic coasts. Um, and it's actually quite uh, quite interesting. Uh, I actually never recommend that people eat the, the whole seaweed itself. But uh, like now, we're here in May, uh, these like kind of berries, they're growing on it and they're really tasty. So they grow from around February until March, uh, no, May or June, and then they're released and they're basically like berries. Uh, so you can pick them and if you pickle it, uh, it will taste almost exactly like uh, kappers. Mm. This is really interesting, yeah. but like kappers with a, like a little ocean twist. Yeah. So it's really good. Okay, gonna have some seaweed berries yeah. first. <laughs> <laughs> Which, okay, I pull it. <laughs> Oh, nice! I like the pop of like yeah. salt water. Yeah, and I mean these berries, they also grow, for example, on this species mm -hmm. and, and others. But those are like more slimy mm. and like these, you, you just bite through them. They have a really nice mm. texture. This kind of reminds me of, I mean, this is, it has a pop to it, but like olives a little bit because olives yeah. can be like this salty, briny yeah. taste. And you said capers, which I really like too. And yeah. I, when I was younger, my mom would like put capers on different dishes. So. Yeah. So I like this one. Yeah. I also like salty things like this is. Yeah, this species can get really old. It can, okay. it can grow to around eighty or ninety years old. Is that one of the? It, this is full of air, so it uses uh, it to float while okay. it's underwater. So, so how old can this species get? Around eighty years old. Wow. So it, I mean, an eighty-year-old plant or whatever is never gonna like <laughs> taste like really good or, or have a nice bite to it. It's yeah. just like and then you like yeah yeah you spit it out yeah. so i only recommend that you pick this because this grows fresh yeah. every year and then then the, this the is sea, the, the truffle yeah the sea truffle sea truffle okay Let's so see. just take a like a really really small bite okay. just to get the, the the taste because it's really strong this is a this is a spice oh yeah whoa and like the further you have it in your mouth like it's pretty strong yeah yeah it's strong and it's like an explosion yeah. of flavors it's nice though i like strong flavors so i'm mm. gonna take a little a little bit more because when you first put it in it doesn't have this kind of like hairy mm. texture but once you start chewing it that changes and it just keeps like bursts in one area and then your saliva kind of takes it around yeah. the rest of your mouth it's really interesting yeah 
uh, spicy. It is, like you can totally taste the similarity to truffle, but the C part is very much there too. I mean, that's just a part of it. This is interesting. Mm. So do you take this fresh and use it, or do you normally dry it and, and use it? For I usually dry it. I, I pick it uh, and I wash it in cold water at home because mm -hmm. sometimes there's little, yeah. More protein? Yeah, more protein, <laughs> like living there, so I wash it Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, with water because also I'm not looking for the salt flavor in this. I'm okay. looking for the truffle flavor, so I like to take the salt out mm -hmm. and then I just dry it. Nice. This is, as you can see, I'm like still eating while yeah. she's talking. I'm actually really enjoying this. Yeah. Hmm. So seaweeds, they are some of the most nutritious organisms that we that you can find. They, they contain a, a high amount of minerals and trace elements, uh, vitamins, uh, and many bioactive ingredients that are really good for, for us. So this here is a, is a green seaweed called sea lettuce, and it's really good. Uh, the seaweeds that are like thin like this, they are usually really high in protein and it's really, really good. So Atheus just handed me some sea lettuce, look at this. And it looks like lettuce just wet and also really shiny though. So it almost has like this kind of plastic look to it, but obviously it's not plastic. So let's take a taste. Of course it has sea water, but once you get past that, it's very much like uh, the texture has a little bit, um, you know, like when you crunch into lettuce and it automatically just breaks. This takes a little bit more chewing in order to for that to happen, but it has the, a similar, and I can see why they call it lettuce because it doesn't have like an abundant flavor. Like it's very much a lot of water, and we're just chewing. I'm sure lots of nutrients though, <laughs> but super fascinating. Yeah, this yeah. is red algae. Uh, this is what we call sur. Uh, or, or dulce, and this is the most common, yeah, common Dulce's. seaweed to, yes. yeah, to eat in Iceland. And actually, I think in the north, oh, there's a fish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm eating over here. Yeah. <laughs> so you should try. I'm eating over here. <laughs> you should try to eat okay. it just, you know, straight from the. You think a piece like this, or? Yeah. This is usually eaten dried. Okay. But yeah, I've definitely seen bags of this before. Yeah. Um. Red algae, like dulse for some of you. I used to have dulse flakes yeah. that I would put on my food. So yeah, it's really interesting to see it fresh like this though. So. Oh yeah, there's definitely a crunch there. Hmm. It's hard to kind of describe the taste, but yeah, there is definitely a distinct flavor. Like I taste like this one, which is kind of like, yeah, it's in my mouth, there's something there, but this one has like a, I'm not sure how to explain it. It just has its own flavor. Yeah. Like, it's not like anything else. Right, exactly. It's not like a flavor I could equate it to well. I'm also not a culinary master, to be fair. Mm. <laughs> this is fascinating. Wow. Yeah. Nice. So, and then and then there's a rock there. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a rock. This is how it's growing. Yeah, this is how it's growing. So That's I'm, fascinating. I'm going to return it <laughs> once, okay. we've, once we've seen it. And there are a couple of more species. For example, this one here. This is a brown seaweed. Uh, this is called uh, sugar kelp. Mm. It's actually, actually really good. You should try to. Okay. This is a uh, different texture. Yeah. Um, definitely different flavor. It's a much stronger flavor, actually. Yeah. Uh, in Japanese cuisine, this would be called kombu. Kombu. Okay. okay. So this is what miso you were saying. Yeah. Soup. The yeah. base for miso soup is made off of, and I can. Yeah. Hmm. And also, like, if you're, for example, boiling beans or something, mm -hmm. you can boil it with the beans, and there are some chemicals in this that will make the beans more digestible, mm. and you will fart less. <laughs> <laughs> Hear that, people? There is a, there's a secret to farting less when you eat beans. Cool. And then we have more, like... Oh, there there's, are, more. Yeah, there's, there's more. This is just like a, yeah. an ecosystem so, happening here. It like, is. So this one here is called Irish moss. Okay. Uh, or kind of karaganan moss. So if you so. boil this, you will get the karaganan out of the, the seaweed. And karaganan is a very common thickening agent okay. that I use. Uh, it's used also to uh, clarify beer, for example. Hmm. So you will definitely have had this probably multiple times yeah. 
Uh, I like beer. Yeah, just, <laughs> no, just through the week because oh, okay. uh, you will find karaganan in so many, like in ice cream or all um, kinds of sauces, just to get like in in cocoa milk, the Icelandic chocolate milk. Mm -hmm. It has karaganan, uh, and that's why it's so smooth. Oh, interesting. So, so this is uh, like an adult uh, sugar kelp, like the one that you ate before. So you can see that it, it can grow quite big. It can actually grow bigger than this, up to, I think, six meters long and like really wide. And what is this? This is a kelp. Uh, we call it uh, Rosafari. Uh, and this is also a kombu. Uh, it's not as sweet as a sugar kelp. Uh, it has, yeah, you're gonna taste more like the miso flavor from this one than the sugar kelp. This is, this is actually the kelp that I use for my cosmetics. Okay, so, so seaweeds in general, they're characterized into three categories. Uh, there's brown seaweeds, like the ones that you see here. There are green seaweeds and red seaweeds. And it depends on, on, the, on the pigments that are, are in them. They all contain green pigments uh, to absorb the light. Uh, the red seaweeds, they are a bit like sun shy. They tend to be in the shadow or, or underneath, for example, brown algae, and they tend to grow further down. And the green seaweeds, they are on the, on the other side of the spectrum. They, they crave the sun. So they are usually on top of the, the other seaweeds. And the brown seaweeds, they're kind of in the middle. So this has been so much fun with Aethys showing us around and opening our world up to the fact that when you come to the beach in Iceland, there's food all around you. And I am definitely going to look at the shore different as well as excited about going to try things and show other people that I know about the fact that, you know, there's a little treasures of tastiness all around, but you have some products here yeah. that most people are, or I didn't say most, but many of you might be aware of or seen in your stores or maybe you eat yourself and that stuff you find in yeah, the store. I mean, what, what people usually think about seaweeds, edible seaweeds, is this one. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's naughty. Uh, and you can find this uh, yeah, almost in every store. We actually have uh, many nori species growing in Iceland so you can just go and maybe make your own nori seeds. Mm -hmm. um, and this here, uh, Sør of Dalsi, this is the most common edible seaweeds that you will find in Icelandic yeah. stores. And Aethys is also uh, have, has her own book, or has a book that she has done with some other individuals. And could you explain a little bit about this book? Yeah, uh, we, we published this book last year. Uh, we're basically trying to reintroduce seaweeds to Icelanders. We used to, we used to use it a lot more yeah. uh, as food uh, but then yeah i think people kind of forgot that yeah. it existed great and then of course a lot of delicious recipes yeah a lot there are like a ton there's pictures yeah. and everything of different things and this is not available in english yet but yeah. possibly <laughs> in the future so fyi but if you want to take a crack at deciphering icelandic you know this book is available <laughs> and there will be a link in the description box last but certainly not least she has uh, products and a shampoo, a dry shampoo, and a face mask. So, could you explain a little bit about these? Yeah, Seto is my brand. Uh, we've actually we haven't launched a product yet, but we'll be launching this product uh, at the end of the month. Uh, this is a powder shampoo, so you rehydrate it in the bath or in mm. the shower. So, like one, this tiny bottles bottle is the equivalent of a four. 100 milliliter bottle yeah. so a little goes a very long way yeah <laughs> so all the ingredients that i use in my products they are biodegradable and non-toxic to aquatic ecosystems so that's Great. something that is very important to me thank you so much Atheist. this was mm -hmm. lovely and if you have enjoyed this type of content coming out harvesting seaweed yeah. definitely make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more awesome content like this all the links to Atheist's products, the book, and maybe where to find you on social media, perhaps, yep. will be in the description box below. As always, thanks for watching and thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for coming. And we'll see you in the next video.